patience to set up this question for just a moment. I wholeheartedly believe that it is our responsibility to report issues of sexual abuse, including if someone is serving as a leader in a church with such a history, just as the 2021 SBC resolution addressed. So when I became aware of a situation in March of this year, I knew I needed to contact the church that they had a deacon serving who had a predatory past. Because the pastor of that church was running for SBC office, I believed I might be charged with acting politically. So I contacted the consultant of this sex abuse task force to seek counsel. Your consultant chose to advise the task force of my actions, and the consultant wrote me saying, quote, the task force chairman called and communicated that he had no concerns related to how you handled it and felt it was quite clear based on the plain facts, unquote. 24 hours after reporting, someone sent my wife's stolen rough draft that contains Is this a question? Yes, it's going to be a question, and I beg your pardon, Mr. President, to be able to set this up for the question because these details are important for the task force for the question. Right. I promise you that. You may proceed. Thank you. This happened, there was abuse in this article, uh, abuse that happened to my wife from her childhood. It was sent to Baptist News Global as a means of retaliation for me having reported this. Bob gossip began to spread that I was acting politically. Everything I feared would happen did. I contacted the task force, or at least a consultant did. Bug, excuse me, but you cannot make personal accusations on the floor of this committee. What accusation did I make? And I make, I, I pardon what, what specifically did I say? We, we, we must maintain order in the room. This is not how we do our business. So let us continue with this. Mr. Bucket, it appeared to me that you were making an accusation of your statement just previous to this. So you, if you can, can you like a specific way I said there was an accusation, I want to make sure I know that. Well, you, you made accusations about someone reporting this to a news organization and so forth. So if you would, move to your question. Please. Well, that's not an accusation, Mr. President. That's actually reported by Baptist News Local. Okay. Could you move to your question, please? I am moving to my question. Thank you. Even if the ta this current task force could not say something officially as brothers and sisters in Christ, there was nothing that was done to defend me or my wife for having reported this. So I don't come here today to seek an apology, but I come here with this question that I think is important for the message. Before we vote to potentially start any potential level of bureaucracy in the SBC, or set up a system of reporting, which I believe we should have in the SBC, what assurance do these messengers have that when they go to report something that involves sexual abuse, that they won't be hung out to dry the same way my wife and I have, how can any survivor trust a recommendation from this task force that they will be protected from the future system after you have watched my wife suffer and her story as a survivor be weaponized? I think the members, messengers of this body need to have some assurance that what happened to us will not happen to someone else. So, Tom Buck believes a great divide is coming within the SBC. And I agree with him 100% that it's not only coming, I believe the SBC won't survive if it doesn't come. Personally, I hope they call the new SBC the BSBC for Biblical SBC. This convention needs to be held accountable because what's going on right now is demonic and a clear attack from Satan. Right now, God is pruning the SBC. And this coming divide will be the result of true Christians following Paul's commands in Titus 3.10, which reads, As for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. And also the admonition from Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 in regards to the church being like-minded. So there are, men, there are men of God right now in the SBC who are seeking to do away with CRT, social justice, women in the pastorate, and everything else that twists scripture. And because of this, there will be a great divide. It's inevitable. So let's pray for this. Let's pray that this happens. There is going to be a split in the convention. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind of that because uh, we are not going to go forward with Resolution 9. The, 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 in, in, for my thinking, I'm not going to stay in a convention that does that. And there are others that say that if we do away with critical race theory, they're leaving. Right. So there's no doubt it's happening. 
And this here is just another great example as to why the Great Divide needs to happen within the SBC. Another church within the SBC had a cover of Run DMC's Walk This Way song performed during worship. Now, can you imagine what true churches in like third world countries are thinking when they see what is going on in churches here in America? The church in China that's being persecuted. Could you imagine what they would be thinking if they were able to see what was happening here in America with these churches? Them having to meet in underground basements and bunkers just so that they can have fellowship while churches here in America are performing full concerts. Let's go for another one from cyberspace. Why should we engage in debate since it seems to cause division in the church? What message does that send to those outside the church? God forbid that we should ever debate the truth of the gospel, and that we should ever follow in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul who debated the matter every day in the marketplace and who wrote all these epistles to correct error and distortions of the truth of God. Weren't those letters that the apostle wrote to the Ephesians and to the Galatians and the Colossians divisive? Nothing divides like truth. Nothing divides like Jesus. But we have this idea that the only real sin that you can have is dividing a church. Well, there are churches that need to be divided, and they need to be divided not over minor matters, not over peccadilloes, but over substantive issues of the truth of God. And our Lord, when He was asked by Pontius Pilate, you know, what are you about? He said, I came to bear witness to the truth. And those who are of the truth hear my voice. And then the next thing Jesus said, but I sure don't want to divide anybody over the truth. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, but it's really not funny. But that's what, I mean, they said the worst thing you can say is, the truth is important, and when you, when you do that, then what happens is the truth gets slain in the streets and anything goes.